and then our off season, I suppose, uh, booking the biggest guests that we can find, although it is hardly the off season. It's the thick of it, thick of the season for our guest today. We're joined by the head coach at Sam Houston, Coach Casey Keeler. Coach, how are you? Yeah, spring break. And, uh, <laughs> but it, it's, it reminds you, spring break last year, we came back, and then, since I had traveled, I wasn't allowed on campus, and we sent all of our kids home. And so that's when the whole thing started was for us really was a, a year ago when the decision was made that they're pulling the plug on in-person classes and no more spring practice. And, and uh, yeah, and now a year later, we're playing a spring season. You know, who would have thought it? Uh, is it safe to say that this is the uh, strangest uh, season of your career? Well, for many reasons. I mean, for the pandemic, obviously. Uh, and then you throw a historic weather storm in there that for four days, um, we found a, a, a friend of the, the program that had a well. So we actually could get fresh water to our players so they could drink we, we had no water. And um, we had no heat, no electricity. I was, you know, I was getting reports that our guys were in apartments and it was like 32, 33 degrees in the apartments because uh, there's no heat, no electricity. Uh, and then even the fast food places were shut down. There was no food to be found. So, you know, the coaches chipped together and we got made, got made soup for them and sandwiches. And so all this stuff is, is things that, that I see them as opportunities. You know, I think a lot of people look at, at them as challenges. To me, this is a great way to bring a team together. Um, you know, it, it took three days for us to, to uh, dig our, uh, our, our, our field out. You know, we, we, we didn't get our field dug out till Friday. And if we want to start digging three days earlier, we would have never got, we, it probably would have been, you know, full week or, or longer till we would have got out on the practice field. So all those things, I think they just bring a team together. And as we were talking earlier, you know, without having a facility and without having locker room, you really have seen the kids just embrace the fact that we get a chance to be together. We get a chance to play football. And, you know, COVID has been hard and they know that, they go to school, they play football, and they hang out with their roommates, not their teammates, which is so strange because they can't hang out with their teammates because if there's a test and then we have contact tracing, you could, you know, look what's going on with James Madison right now. You know, they're, they're not going to play two ball games because of contact tracing for a whole group. So yeah, there's been some unique challenges and, but I, I, I see these as opportunities and I really think it's brought our team very close together. We've been, in, we've been in some close ball games early on, especially, uh, you know, the first game was obviously a close one all the way through a uh, second one, the first quarter, they punched us in the mouth pretty good. Our kids didn't panic at all. There was not boo from the sideline. It just was, let's go play the next play. And again, I think not playing for 450 days or whatever it's been has really been one of those, aha moments where it's like we just love to play this game and let's just go play and so coach obviously you guys wait a long time to play in the spring and and i know you've learned a lot about your team during that time um i, I want to go back to last week where you guys welcome in uh, a top 10 team in in the nation in Nichols, and um well you win in, in a pretty big way uh i'm 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 interested from from your perspective maybe what you learned about your team last week and what was a, at the very least, a pretty eye-opening experience for a lot of folks around the nation. Well, yeah, you know, Nichols is a good football team, and, and we knew that. And they came out, and, and I told our guys in a championship bout, you're going to take some punches. And, and they threw some haymakers at us early. You know, Eric was on COVID protocol for a week, so he hadn't practiced till Tuesday. And I think you could see that a little bit early in the game where he made a bad read and threw an interception. And, you know, led to a score. And then we had our first team All-American punter hit a bad punt with the wind to his back and gave him good field position. And we kind of made a defensive play. And, you know, the whole thing was about just, like, don't worry about, like, what the final destination is. Let's just play the next play. And our kids did a great job doing that. And then we caught fire. And, you know, we're, we're pretty explosive offensively. We really have some pretty athletic kids and pretty dynamic kids. And so you really can't like lock down or decide that you're going to put your attention on one or spot or the other. You do a lot of misdirection. Uh, and all of a sudden you see guys sneaking out of the backfield or you, you get guys in behind people. And Eric does a great job of, of making you pay when you make a mistake. The other thing that Eric does such a great job of is, you know, we were down, uh, I said earlier, you know, like 
three or four offensive linemen. Depends what part of the game it was. You know, we went into the game without three starting offensive linemen and lost Colby Thomas for a period of time. And but Eric does such a good job of moving around the pocket subtly and just extends that play for that extra quarter of a second or half a second. And that allows him to make those plays downfield. Um, so, yeah, we, we, have a, we have a pretty good team. And, and, you know, we knew Nichols, we beat Nichols last year at our place, you know, shut him out. We knew that was, you know, a game that they had marked on the calendar, you know, low revenge game. And they came out throwing haymakers at us. And we just kind of settled in. And then from there, you know, we, we got them to call, you know, make some, make some mistakes and then it kind of steamrolled on them. Um, but yeah, we, we, again, to put 71 up on a, on a good football team is pretty impressive. Well, and maybe, you know, one of the things that I've, I've mentioned to, to folks is, is I feel like because of the gaudy numbers and obviously Eric Schmidt, your quarterback had a great game and, and, and the offense was really lighting it up. That might overshadow what, feels like a really solid defensive effort from yeah. you guys. That's a that's a Nichols team that, especially running the ball, is extremely dangerous, and you guys have were able to shut them down. You're a defensive guy. What have you seen from your defense so far this season? Well, you know, we felt up front we had as good as anybody in the country. You know, Trace Mascara is as good a football player as I've ever coached. You know, Joe Wallace is just a beast. Jahari K has probably been the most dominant of all of them. And he's the guy who wasn't the all-conference guy. Javon Leon was freshman All-American. So you have all these guys with all these, you know, gaudy numbers and these accolades. And then Shahari K has played probably as an All-American. So you put that all together. Um, you have some ability to play some three-man line because, you know, we have some pretty good linebackers that we can put kind of in the jack position. Uh, Mark Cal Perry is the perfect jack linebacker. You can put him down. You can pass him back. And then we've gotten some really good linebacker play. You know, I think people were surprised about that because, you know, we graduated our two captains who were both linebackers. But uh, Trevor Williams uh, has been just lights out. You know, you can't miss him. He's all about five foot nine. Uh, we call him the field mouse. And he's just all over the field. And uh, um, that defensive line gives him a lot of opportunities. And then Quentin Brown um, has been a little bit of a surprise, quite honestly. A guy we got from Tulane, started off a little slow in a scrimmage and then it was like Quentin you gotta pull your tr pull the trigger I mean you, you guys gotta go you know just let it fly and he made a play in the southeast Louisiana game on a third and seven that could have made it their game and he makes a big play and then we get the fourth down stop the next play and he's played really really well so we feel really good about that front seven big thing for us last week was we got Jalen Thomas back and, you know, Jalen, I think, is one of the best football players that I've ever coached. And what he brings to the team is not only a guy who can play nickel or play corner or could play safety, but his intensity and just all those intangible things, his energy level. I mean, like we could you could tell we missed him last week. You know, he's one ball player, but he does more than just play play football. He also brings an energy level, an intensity level, level and an accountability level that is really high. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought our defense played like I thought it was going to play this year. And then you can see offensively, we have some pretty good weapons and you know, we can be, we can be dangerous. Uh, you guys are now up to number seven in the, uh, the FCS rankings, which I know you keep a close eye on and you're putting a lot of <laughs> stock into and stuff like that. Um, but you are a guy who, look, you've taken uh, three teams to, to, to national semifinals. You've won a pair of South of the Conference titles. You've been around great teams. Right. Do you have a feeling yet as to how this team may compare with some of those great Sam Houston teams we've seen in the past? Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, I've been a head football coach 27 years, and 13 of my teams have been in the Final Four in the country. Yeah. So almost 50% of every season I play, I have gotten a team to the Final Four. This team is as talented as any. And when you have a guy like Eric Schmidt as your trigger guy, you always feel you can score points because there's just so many things you can do with him. And Ryan Cardi, the reason I hired Ryan Cardi, Ryan, Ryan played for me at Delaware. He's actually Joe Flacco's backup. He had been in New Hampshire for about 12 years. I tried to hire him three other times. And my, my vision of what he did offensively is what we're doing right now. And we play with some tempo, but it's not like, you know, lights out tempo every single snap. There's also a lot more scheme involved. 
you'll see a shift, you'll see motions, you'll see different formations, things that I thought we needed to do to get over the hump to win a national championship. And I'm not saying this team is ready to win a national championship. I'm saying that's kind of my mentality. When I go into a season, I'm trying to prepare us to be a national championship team. Uh, and that's the mindset of our program. As I've said to our players a thousand times, we won 99 games in 10 years, 59 the last six. We've been in the final four, five of the last 10 years. We haven't won a national championship. That's really what I, what's off our resume. And, you know, so that's kind of the mindset. Now, that does that mean that you don't prepare for Lamar? No, that means you prepare for Lamar. Because in, in our world, we always talk about football being cumulative. And so to be the best team in the country, you must keep on getting better cumulatively. Because if you don't, if you don't get better in a week, that's that week that could cost you uh, a chance to get in the playoffs or a chance to win a playoff game or a chance to win a championship. So there's a pretty good focus level here now with our guys. They know we have a good team and we just got to keep on working and preparing. Uh, you know, another aspect, obviously everything has been turned upside down because of the pandemic, but the recruiting aspect of things has obviously changed significantly. Um, you know, we've, we've heard from a, 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 at the FBS level recruiting uh, and the challenges there. I'm, I'm interested what the challenges have been like uh, there at Sam Houston as far as recruiting guys when, you know, you can't you can't bring them on campus. You can't, you know, yeah. shake their hand face to face. I know you're a guy who uh, you you do a lot of your work in the living room. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, and, and, and you can't do that. So how does that right. change your your your, uh, your approach? Well, we, we're blessed to be getting a new facility. So I think having that on our Zoom calls was really good. Uh, you know, we brought in a gentleman, um, Clayton Barnes, who is 99% of his time, it's fo focused on recruiting. 1% he's doing some operational stuff, but we have some other people doing that. But so he's the one who's setting up all the Zooms and making sure we have the right, the right, uh, you know, presentations and let's put our nutritionist on there. Let's put our strength coach on there. Let's put our academic advisor on there. So he does a really good job of doing all those kind of things. I think what has helped us in recruiting, quite honestly, has been the portal mm -hmm. because a lot of teams didn't sign big freshman classes this year in our state because they were going to focus on the transfer portal, which opened up so many opportunities for us in terms of our high school class. I mean, you know, now we're not battling against some of those teams that, you know, on paper are a notch above us in terms of, you know, they're FBS and we're FCS. Uh, and, um, you know, if they're not signing high school classes, all of a sudden the players that we might have gone head to head and maybe lost some of those guys, we're now getting those guys. So we thought we had a phenomenal class. Also not playing. We wanted to take advantage of the fact that people were playing and we weren't playing. So we were 24-7 with recruiting. And we signed 20, and we love the guys we signed. We think it's one of the best classes we've ever signed. Um, there's a, other big changes coming to, to, to Sam, and that is, of course, uh, this is your last year in the Southland Conference. You guys are making the move to the WAC. Uh, I know that you and, and your athletic director, uh, Bobby Williams, have a very, very tight relationship. Um, and this is a, a big move for, for Sam Houston from, from your perspective as the head football coach. He's going to be going into a new league next year. Uh, where, where are you at on the move to the WAC? Well, you know, this was not done um, like willy-nilly. I mean, Bobby put a lot of thought process in, in, into this, a lot of investigating. And I think this got speeded up a little bit faster than any of us wanted to. I think we, we were trying to, you know, very do our due diligence. and But, you know, word got out and, and all of a sudden there's a Freedom of Information Act. And then it, it's seen that we're in conversations with the WAC. And this is what I told Bobby very early on. Listen, I trust you. You tell me this is a good move, it's a good move. Don't worry about, you know, any input from me because quite honestly, I'm gonna put, I'm, I have other things to do with, you know, what, everything going on with trying to get ready for a season and recruiting all those things. And I just put it, I think long-term, this is an amazing opportunity for Sam Houston. Short-term, the headache was gonna be getting a schedule for next year. And we put a schedule together. We found uh, a creative way to work with the Atlantic Sun and we brought in Jacksonville State and um, you know, Central Arkansas, who's now gone to the Atlantic Sun, and Eastern Kentucky. And now we've paired with them to make a conference for one year uh, so we can have an AQ. So we, we worked through that challenge. But long term, bringing Southern Utah in, um, the WAC name, I think it's going to be really outstanding for, for Sam Houston. And I think it was the right move. 
Uh, and, and finally, Coach, uh, I want to ask you, you know, you mentioned a couple of years, a couple of weeks ago with the, the big winter storm uh, that came through. Uh, you know, you're a, you're a northern guy. You're from Pennsylvania. Uh, you coached in New Jersey. You coached in Delaware. This is your first job back in Texas. Uh, so the winter storm blows through. Did that have you wistful for the the winter weather is it, is it that that th did it make you miss any of that nonsense no. that had to blow through our state no the f first person i texted was bobby williams because bobby told me when he hired me you can leave your winter jackets at home you're not going to need them here oh great it doesn't even matter my first day on the job we canceled school because there was a snow there was snow but my wife was with me, we're doing the press conference. And when she looks out of the hotel window and she goes, I see snow, but I don't think they're used to seeing snow. I said, why is that? She said, there's about a quarter inch and there's about five kids outside of our room trying to make, make a, uh, a snowman and with a quarter of an inch of snow. And, but they cancel school with a quarter of an inch. So I, I could tell that it was probably a, that's something that they weren't used to, but that's really kind of the last snow we've seen the, the day I was hired. And then um, seven years later, boy, we got hit pretty good. I mean, we had a busted pipe. I walk out in the garage about seven in the morning and there's a flood taking place in my garage. And so, uh, yeah, not only did the kids get hit, but a lot of our coaches got hit with it too. But again, I saw it as an opportunity, great way to bond together. I went out to the uh, the local uh, hardware store, bought uh, six uh, feed shovels because there's no snow shovels. You know, they, they don't have snow shovels. So, so yeah, I we, all the found, we all found that out at the exact same time. <laughs> I was out quick, got those feed shovels, and I just started, you know, getting the interns and the coaches and the strength staff. And we just started rotating as soon as the stuff stopped. And for three days, you know, like the first day, they looked at me like, Coach, you're crazy. I was like, listen, guys, the weather is not changing. We have to chip away at this. And then eventually some sun's going to come out, and you'll see how this melts. And I was right. And we got a chance to get on the field on Friday. But, uh, yeah, it's been fun. It, it, again, you know, I have a great group here. And it's fun when you go through those challenges together. Uh, I'm excited to play a Lamar team that uh, you look at them, you see them get better every single week. And they're playing really hard. And they came away with a big win on the road against McNeese. Um, so, you know, I think that has, you know, really kind of got our guys' attention very focused. And then in the world we live in now, we have to travel the day of the game. We can't stay overnight. So, you know, that's another challenge. So. Uh, again, and another opportunity. So I'm, I'm excited to play a, a Lamar team that uh, keeps on getting better every week and, and uh, will give you some challenges with running the triple option. So it's not something you see every single day. Uh, then they'll do, go under center and run it like a Navy and a, or, a, or an Army. Uh, so again, that makes you do some other things. So, um, so I think that's gotten our attention pretty focused in after a big win over Nichols. He's Casey Keeler. He's the head coach of the number seven Sam Houston Bearcats. Coach, really appreciate your time. Congratulations again on the fantastic start, and uh, best of luck this Saturday. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks.